Greetings and welcome to Let's Play Alone in the Dark. <laughs> Wait. No, 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 no. Um, this is just a little retrospective of my horror months. I wanted to talk a bit about the games I played and I'm not going to rate them or review them, I'm just giving you my opinion about these games, what mm, some of them mean to me because most of them I already played, in fact, almost all of them, and yeah, just a few general thoughts, if I found them scary or why they are not scary or what could have improved to make them scary, if you can make them scary at all. Hmm? Anyways, um, Alone in the Dark was my first one. When I saw a picture of this game, a screenshot, I really wanted to play this game. I kind of like the setting. I'm a huge Lovecraft fan. Mm, sadly, only the first one has about some stuff about Lovecraft. The second one is about voodoo rituals, and the third one about Indian rituals. So, but still, um, what I personally think is you cannot really make an adventure game like this scary. Problem being is that, how to explain it, I didn't find Resident Evil scary, to be honest. It had this jump scares, yes, but overall the mood isn't there when every all this in your mind is where is the next key, <clears throat> where is the ruby, what do I need to do next, <clears throat> how do I open this door, how do I solve this puzzle. This takes you out of the immersion of fighting uh, of this game. Well, the graphics, <laughs> there was nothing really scary about it, there was nothing too mysterious, it kinda came out as random, like, the so that you fought zombies, you fought werewolves, you fought some Hydra, no, not really Hydra, but scorpion tail thingies, uh, there was some random thing in the bathtub, there was this pixel thing in the library. It didn't feel like... Mm, it was consistent. It was just like random stuff. Oh, it's like in a meeting. Okay guys, we need some scary monsters. What do you have? Oh, zombies? Yeah? Okay, yes, werewolves. Werewolves is okay. What else do we have? A zombie pirate? Oh, well, yeah, we may work this in. Spiders, yes, everyone is afraid of spiders, giant worm, wonderful, we have stuff now. Perhaps we can add some more later. And that's not really <laughs> that fitting. But all in all, it's a good game, but if you want a good scare, stay away from it. So, the next game, Call of Cthulhu, Shadow of the Comet. Scary is something different. Um, it's the same problem like with Alone in the Dark, adventure games, in my opinion, aren't that scary. I kinda lost track of the story midway of this game. You were somehow running away from the village, but still slept two days in the same room in there. The Icarus scene was totally out of character and out of context. I have no idea what I, well, perhaps because I, I played it with a walkthrough, a bad walkthrough, but it didn't really set up the mood, in my opinion. It was just random, and suddenly the people want to kill you, and for no apparent reason. <coughs> there is another Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth game, which is, which sets up the mood a lot better. It, it's a dirty town, the townsfolk are unpleasant to you from the beginning, they are not inviting you to their home and be nice and all of a sudden they change. Not to mention this game has some really 
bad riddles, really bad. You don't put a riddle in like, oh, you have to do photos, and if you don't know the chemicals, you're screwed, and oh, you have to pour acid at a random spot on the ground to get a diamond. That's bad design. All in all, not really scary. I, like I said in the Alone in the Dark thing, I like the Cthulhu Mythos, but this game, it could have been any kind of Mythos, it didn't live up to it. It had annoying riddles in my opinion, and again, if you want a scare, stay away from it. The Lurking Horror, yes, um, I played a text adventure. <laughs> I'm kind of proud of myself. People did seem to enjoy it somehow. And, well, I have to agree with Aldan Loco. He said it in another video. The most horrifying thing is the things you don't see. If you have the fear in your face all the time, you get used to it. I will come back to this topic later in my, in Fatal Frame review, but um, if you don't know what's up and suddenly there is something looming behind you and you don't really see it but it's there and stuff like that and perhaps you can't really fight it, you try to fight it, you try to avoid it, you want to get away from there but somehow you have to stay there, that's horror. That's something like Silent Hill does very well. Silent Hill is something you don't want to be there. You have to feel for the characters or somehow the story around it. Again, something I will take on in Fatal Frame. But all in all, the lurking horror, if you want a horror game, if you get into it, it wasn't bad. I kinda liked it. It was okay. I wouldn't play it without a walkthrough, but uh, that's just me. <sighs> Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. Uh, overrated. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry if you are a really big fan of Eternal Darkness. And I know that Yatsi is. Yatsi Kosho from Zero Punctuation. He said that this is really one of the best games ever, and best game on the GameCube. And it's not. I'm, I'm sorry. The only gimmick, that's the point, the only gimmick this game has is the sanity meter. In my opinion, it doesn't tell a very good story, because it's telling 12 different stories, which is horrible in my opinion. They are all kinda the same. Somebody gets into one of the four locations and either dies or finds something in there. There is no really diversity. And <coughs> that's it somehow. Uh, I really didn't like it. It dragged out for way too long. The riddles if there were any riddles, were pretty stupid and long drawn out. The two boss fights I had, the first one was annoying, in my opinion. I'm sorry, the, please, game designers, make either a hit bar or something. Like, he could have taught. That's the thing I didn't get. If I shoot at this thing, it's taunting me. Oh, you cannot hurt me with bullets. Be -be 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 -be. But if I hit him with magic, when he's not hittable by magic, he doesn't say anything. So, why? Why is it telling... He's a or. He's a telling me nothing at all, like, you dumb fuck, why are you shooting at me? Or, it's not... It's telling me all. Or do some reaction, something like laughing, like, ah, <laughs> you try to hit me when I'm not vulnerable. <laughs> and the combat was... It was pathetic. You had what? Four enemy types, the little lurker that transported you in another dimension. Their only point was to delay the game. And that's not good. That's not good at all. 
Then we had the zombies, well the three zombie types. <laughs> I didn't really see a huge difference between them. Some of them you could remove the head and it just stood there, one of them not. Uh, awesome. Um, the horrors, which were either piss easy or somehow kicked my ass all the time. I never really saw a point when why this happened. And then you had the flying, uh, the uh, yes, the the vulture thingies, skeletons, whatever. Uh, is it invulnerable or you just hit it from behind and I don't know it, it it's still it's really overrated if you're a huge fan of this game then I'm sorry put down the glasses I, I am the same as Dungeon Master people may tell me Dungeon Master is the biggest pile of crap ever I will defend this game until I die <laughs> I love this game then again it's not as bad it, this game it was it no, no, no. It had game breaking elements in it, so Dungeon Master isn't that bad. I don't know what else I like that people in general hate. It's usually the other way around, but this game, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I will never play this game again. The problem with the insanity thing that, like I said, it was just a gimmick. They could have built they, mu they should have built the whole game just around the insanity thing. For example, if, you, if your insanity is low, or if your sanity is low, then you see enemies you cannot fight, stuff like that. All the, all the insanity did was just put you into a in the room where nothing really happened to you and show you a cutscene of five seconds that did some strange stuff like, oh, there are there's ammunition strewn on the floor, or the game controller is plugged out, or whatever. Um, that's just a gimmick, just a small cutscene for whatever reason. Same way, uh, Big Fatty Plus said it that he never got the um, cutscenes from the grandpa father because he always kept his sanity high. So it was just cutscenes. All these insanity effects were just random cutscenes. And going back to this healing thing, you cannot have in a horror game unlimited ammunition or magic or something that doesn't go out. Most of the time, if you really play this game by yourself and not let's play it, you will keep your sanity meter maximized. You will keep your health meter maximized. You will keep your mana meter maximized. Even if you have to run around in a circle for five minutes, you can always keep everything you have maximized. And that's not good gameplay. If there is no fear of running out of anything, there is no reason to be scared. Especially if you always see the same four enemies. <laughs> That's the main problem. And yes, let me cut the video quick and then I will be right back.